Hi guys, welcome back. Uh, today's video is going to be um, about answering the question uh, for people who've decided, okay, I'm, I'm ready to, to try this cloth pad reusable scenario, um, so where do I start? That's what this video is going to be about. And, and before I get into it, I want to start with two major points. First, this is going to be aimed more at um, people who want to purchase as opposed to sew their own. For me, I started by sewing my own, and, and frankly, I think that's where you should start. However, not everybody has the time to sew. A lot of people don't have the inclination to sew, and that's okay. You don't have to make your own pads. There are a lot of great people out there making pads for you, and so this is my video for you. Um, I'm going to end up concentrating long-term on sewing more than on purchasing, but I wanted to make sure that, you know, for the ladies who don't want to sew their own, there are answers for you as well. Um, number two, I'm never ever going to give a negative review for anybody's cloth pad shop, menstrual cup, any any of that. Um, there are products that don't work for me and in the future when I tell you about those, it'll be framed that way. Uh, the only time I would give a negative review is if I had a really, really terrible customer service experience or if I got something that I thought was truly poorly made. Um, I would I would give a negative review for that sort of thing. But as far as, oh, I didn't like this pad, it's terrible, don't buy it. Um, I don't think that the, that the reusables world works that way because, you know, my body is shaped the way it's shaped and my periods are the way they are and your body might be different and your periods might be different and your underwear choices might be different. You know, you may have different sized thighs than I do. You, you know, you may have a preference for the front or the back that I don't have. So for me to give a negative review based on what doesn't necessarily work for me would be kind of useless. Um, so in this video, I'm going to be advising beginners not to purchase certain types of pads from certain types of companies. And this is not a negative review of those companies. This is not a negative review of their products. Um, so please don't take it that way. Um, I'm not telling you never to buy these things. I'm telling you where I think you should start and where I think you should avoid starting. Um, so it was important to frame that because I got nothing but love for these cloth pad makers, whether they're big companies or s some woman working in her basement at her sewing machine. I've got nothing but love for all of that. Um, and no matter which kind of pad it is out there, they're somebody's favorite. So they work for somebody. Uh, but I'm going to... I'm just going to keep this for when you're sitting there, you don't own a cloth pad yet, but you really want to start trying them. This is, this is how you should start. Okay. So the first thing that you run into as a beginner who has never purchased cloth pads before, um, is you run into trying to figure out which kind you should buy. And it's not even just which company should you pick, it's what kind should you buy. And so I'm going to break down, um, the cloth pad universe can be broken down into two major types. The first type is the all-in-one, um, which is something like this. This is a party in my pants nylon backed pad with a flannel top, and then there's an absorbent core hidden underneath this part. Um, uh, this is the kind I make for myself is also an all-in-one. I like my absorbent core to be on the outside because I like being able to use two different kinds of fabric because I'm just like that. Um, uh, with, you know, but it's just one piece. And then this is also an all-in-one. This is an Annie Bell's Essentials shop pad. Um, it's got just cotton on the front and it's got fleece on the back and the absorbent stuff is in the middle and it snaps. It's all one piece. That's what that means. All in one. So they can look very different from one another, but if it's all, you know, the absorbent core and the part that snaps to your underwear is all in one unit, that's an all in one pad. There is another type of pad on the market, um, and they are very, very popular with lots of different people, and they are called the pocket and liner or base and liner type. Um, the pocket and liner type, um, I'm going to use this pad as an example, um, is the base part. This purple dots part uh, is the part that snaps to your underwear. That is sold separately from 
what the, most of the companies call liners, which is, you know, it won't be this big, um, I guess, unless you're getting like a postpartum and then it might be, but they'll sell you a square of flannel or sorry, all the fuzz on this. It just came out of the dryer. It's got lint on it. It's a microfiber towel from my kitchen. So forgive that. Um, they'll give you a, a square or rectangular piece of material. Sometimes they give you a liner that's cut the same shape as the, the base. Um, and with these, you're supposed to like trifold them, you know, or you're supposed to take it. And in any case, there will be a pocket across the bottom of the base, which would be flat, you know, it wouldn't have this part on it. Um, there would be a pocket down at the bottom and a pocket up at the top, or they would have like an elastic band of some sort uh, across the bottom and the top, and then you would just like insert the ends of your liner uh, into that. And that's, and then the idea is, is that you leave the base attached to your underwear all day and that you would just take the, the liner out and put a clean liner in. Hope that makes sense. Um, and there are several brands that do that. Um, and when a person Googles cloth pads for the first time, um, the first several results that you're going to get on that first page of, of, of search results um, are usually going to be companies that have um, the base and liner type. Oh, and I forget to, forgot to mention, some of them have pockets. So like this liner piece, you know, you get this base, pretend you're just getting the purple and white dots part that snaps the underwear. It would have, instead of an absorbent core, it would have a, a, a pocket here that you would tuck what they call a soaker, which I'm Arkansan. I just find the word soaker vulgar <laughs> in this application. So I have trouble saying it. I'm really sorry, but that's what they're called. Um, so you get a soaker, which is a liner. <laughs> I'm sorry. Look at my face. Getting all red. <laughs> oh, mercy. Anyway, so you open up the pocket and you would tuck in your soaker, uh, into the pad. Um, yeah, so that's not my objection to that type of pad. This is my personal, <laughs> I'm going to have to pause the video. Okay. I have gathered myself. So the next part of this is going to be um, why I advise against beginners starting with the base and liner um, pads that are available out there. And it's not because they don't work or, or anything even like that. Like I said, there are thousands of women out there. This is their favorite type. Um, I've met people in the sewing community that sew uh, pads like, like the base and liner type, which have the, the absorbent part and the base of the pad as separate pieces. And it works for a lot of people for a lot of reasons. However, I don't advise that you start there. And in the next segment, I'm going to tell you why. Okay, there are three major reasons that I like to advise people who are starting out to get the all-in-one kind instead of the base and liner kind. The first reason is cost. Unfortunately, if you're buying pads for yourself, uh, unfortunately, the bigger companies that have been doing this for a while, they're using the, the base and liner type. Um, that's what they've been using, but their prices are much more expensive. Well, not always much more, but always at least marginally more and sometimes much more expensive um, than a lot of the Etsy work at home mom type shops that are out there available selling all in one type pads. Um, not always the party in my pants brand, you know, and there are others like it, but again, you have to keep in mind, I've been doing this for less than a year, so I don't know everything there is to know. These are just the opinions that I've been able to formulate uh, and the companies that I have experience with. The party in my pants brand is an all-in-one brand and they are pretty significantly more expensive than a lot of the stuff that you can find for yourself when you're starting out. And I think that for a lot of beginners, cost is a consideration. It's one of the major considerations for quite a few of the people who are beginning. Because we're used to going out and dropping $4.50 to $10 on a package of pads and a box of tampons. And this whole cloth thing is supposed to be financially advantageous, right? So you want me to spend, you know, $15, $18 for a pad, and then you want me to spend all this extra money on liners and I have to buy how many to get started? It's going to be a ridiculous expenditure. Forget it. 
and, and I want to help overcome that particular hurdle. And the companies that are providing the, the base and liner pads for the most part are more expensive than the people who are selling all-in-ones for the most part. So cost is number one. Number two, um, the there's a skeeve out factor with people who are doing this for the first time. And I, and I believe from my own experience and from what I've heard other women talking about when they ask questions, when they come into one of the Facebook groups or when you see them commenting on YouTube videos, we all have this, this is going to be gross and I'm going to hate it response. Uh, part of that is because we've been conditioned by the media to be ashamed of and view menstruation as a filthy process, which it's really not. I mean, it, it just isn't. There's nothing unclean about it. But we still have that visceral ugh, response to it. And I want your first experiences with cloth to be what they're supposed to be like, rather than having you set yourself up for a possibility of having, oh God, this is worse than I thought, that kind of thing. And again, I've never used a Luna pad. I've never used any kind of base and, and liner type. And I know that there are lots of women who love them. So again, this is not negative. This is a consideration. Second reason is the ski valve factor. When you have, you know, a pad that has an elastic thing up here. If you're anything like me, when you leak, you leak in the front, right here on the edge of the pad. A lot of other people leak in the back right on the edge of the pad. So if this base that you're supposed to wear all day and change out your clean liners from, what if this elastic pocket or this rickrack band or this elastic band gets stuff on it? You want me to put my fingers in there and then put a clean liner in there and touch all this and get it all over my hands at work, at school, in a public restroom while I'm trying to get a clean thing put in here I just think that that sets people who are new to this up for kind of an, I don't want to do this anymore. I, and I, I want you to avoid that. Now, maybe that's not a big, huge problem, but I've seen YouTube reviews where it was mentioned and it was a thought that I had when I was looking at them to purchase for the first time. So that's number two. Number three, this, and again, it's, this is an unfair comparison because obviously the trifolds you're going to get are going to be menstrual pad sized. They're not going to be the size of a kitchen hand towel. So this is not, you know, what we were looking at. But to me, the concept of taking a little as beautiful and soft as they are, an organic cotton towel and folding it, I don't want to sit on a towel. And I think that, again, I've seen it in YouTube reviews. And it was the thought that I had when I was looking at them, and it's the, one of the reasons I didn't purchase them. I don't want to sit on a towel, okay? This is not 1750 or 1885. I don't want to sit on a rolled up piece of cloth, you know? I don't want to return to the prairie. And that's what cloth pad people get accused of on a regular basis, is that we're trying to take women back to Little House on the Prairie where they didn't have any convenience and they had these messy, and they had to shove woolen rags up in their underwear, in their petticoats, to, you know, that's not what cloth pads have been for me. And I'm worried that if you spend a large chunk of money on these pads that you get, and then you, you leak on the elastic, and then you have this where it's thick and bulky, which is a concern so many people bring to me, I just, I want you to avoid that. Now, let's say you get into buying these, you know, all-in-ones, and you find that they're not thick enough to give you confidence and you would like something thicker. You can go for a trifold type. Let's say you get into it and you have absolutely no problem dealing with, you know, the, the fluids that you have to deal with and the potential mess or the potential staining. And that doesn't bother you. You don't mind it. Then go for the base and liner types. Or let's say money isn't a concern for you and what you want is something convenient that you can buy all from one place and just bam, get it done. You know, go ahead and spend a couple hundred dollars on one of these base and liner types and get your get your ready-made stash and, and, and go. If if that appeals to you, then then do it. You know, whatever, whatever gets you off of disposables, do it. But my recommendation is that you start with all-in-one pads. And then in the next segment, I'm going to tell you how to pick sizes, lengths, and, and what you should do as a beginner picking out your first 
menstrual cycle's worth of all-in-ones. You can probably tell from the change in lighting that I have been working on this video longer than usual. I keep recording it and and either not liking what I've got or being interrupted by my dog. It's raining outside right now, so if you hear her whining downstairs, that's what she's going on about. She's not real happy with the weather, and there's really not a whole lot I can do to comfort her right now. I'm not cruel. I love my dog, but she's just generally unhappy, and that's one big major reason why I'm having trouble finishing this video. Okay, so first, let's talk about Etsy, which is where I'm going to recommend that beginners go to purchase their first cloth pads. Etsy.com is a website where people who make things by hand sell their wares online. Um, and most of them work from home, though some do have, you know, regular brick and mortar shops that if you lived in that city, you could visit their store. Now, there are way too many highly regarded Etsy cloth pad sellers for me to really get into recommending where you should go, but I'm gonna tell you how you can find the ones that you want to try first. Um, go to Etsy.com, type in the search window, uh, cloth menstrual pads, and you will get more variety and options than you ever dreamed were possible. Uh, and what I'm going to suggest is, th and I'm serious about this, scroll through and the ones you pick should be the ones that you find pretty. Pick the pretty ones. Um, it's really, really important, so don't discount that. Um, one of the biggest advantages to using cloth other than the physical is that you're going to have menstrual products that make you smile when you look at them. So instead of having this plastic packet that you're going to rip open with this white papery plasticky thing that's going to smell bad the next time you see it, you know, you, you're going to have things where when you get it out you, there's a tactile Oh, it's soft and it's cuddly and it's pretty and I picked it out and, and you are going to be shocked at how that changes the way that you feel during your period and the way you feel about your period. Just, just that. And it's not silly. It's not, just trust me, you'll see. So definitely as you're scrolling through, here comes my puppy. Um, as you're scrolling through, pick the ones that you think are pretty. See, there she is. This is Cadence. I know, baby. Hold on, I'm gonna have to pause the video. I'll try it again. We'll see if she lets me finish this now. Okay, so you scroll through, you find the pretty ones. And then what you wanna do is look at the reviews, read the reviews there on Etsy. Um, go to YouTube if you have time and look at video reviews from that shop. And then you want to choose one or two pads from that shop and then go back to your search um, and scroll through and find a different shop that has a pretty pad. On your first go, do not buy more than one or two from any particular shop because you know, with differing shapes, different patterns, different things that they use in the making of the pad, you're going to find what we call the Goldilocks pad, which is your favorite, the one that's perfect for you. But until you try several different kinds, you won't know which one that is. And, you know, what we really want to avoid is having you spend, like I said before about the base and liner pads, we don't want you to spend a lot of money on something that you end up not liking anymore or just not being, you know, something that you consider perfect or, or good for you, really. So the rain finally stopped and the puppy is happy and the child has been retrieved from school and it is early evening and I am finally getting a few minutes to finish this video. So let's talk about the things that you have to choose from and how you're supposed to decide, you know, absorbency and length and, and all of that. With absorbency, and I'm going to assume for the purposes of this particular video that this is, you know, one of your very first, if not your very first cycle purchasing cloth pads for yourself. So with absorbency, if you have any heavy days in your cycle, um, I'm going to recommend that you just buy heavy pads the first time. And the reason that I'm going to suggest that is because I don't want you to find yourself at any point without a pad that can take care of you. 
I don't want you to have to resort to disposable pads again because you don't have a heavy absorbency and you had an extra heavy day or, or whatever. You can always wear a heavy pad on a light day, but if you try to wear a light pad on a heavy day, it might not work out so well for you. So that's my recommendation is that go with an absorbency that's going to cover your needs on any given day of your cycle. Um, and you won't be buying, you know, I'm assuming you're not going to buy 50 on your first, in fact, I wouldn't recommend that, on your first go. So go with the heaviest absorbency that you feel you'll need to cover yourself at any point throughout your cycle. Um, and those are pretty clearly marked on, on the websites. <clears throat> and if you have any questions, usually um, Etsy type uh, sellers are more than happy to answer specific questions about how many layers of whatever are in them. Uh, final note about absorbency. Um, I know that when I had my first cycle using cloth, I was really worried that they were going to leak on me and because, you know, I, I had that notion. So with my first cloth pads, I made sure that they all had a PUL layer in them. And so I didn't experience any problems with that at all. You don't necessarily need that unless you have a really, really heavy flow or you're worried that you're going to be stuck without being able to change as frequently as you'd like. Um, especially if you're using it in tandem with some kind of an internal protection, I, I don't think that you need to go out of your way to get pool lined pads. Because um, they're, they're actually not as standard as you might think they would be because most people don't really need all of that. Um, but get what you're comfortable with. And if you feel like you're not going to have any confidence without a pool layer in there, that's the polyurethane laminate, which is every bit as dependable as those plastic backed things on the disposable, but it's breathable and it's better for you. But it is absolutely leak proof unless, you know, you actually saturate the pad and go over the sides or whatever. Um, so get something that's going to make you confident so that you're not worried, is it going to leak, is it going to leak, is it going to leak? Because if you spend your whole first cycle on cloth feeling that way, it's, it's, you don't need to have to deal with that. So make sure that there's adequate leak and that all your questions about the, the leak protection in them are answered. Um, length. Okay, this, is, this, is, this one's pretty easy to find your starting point. Whatever your typical disposable brand is at this given moment, I want you to take one of those out, open it up, and then measure how long it is. And you're, that's a good, if that length of pad is good for you, um, if you've never had any problems with that length on your disposable pad, then buy pads uh, from the cloth makers that are about that length. Um, if you find that you frequently leak through your disposable pads in the front or the back, um, get one that's a little longer than your current disposable. Um, if you find that, you know, it's been uncomfortable to have one that long and you're just a center person and all of your bleeding happens in the center and you don't need something that long, get one that's a little bit shorter than your old disposable. Pick your length based on the relationship you have with the length of your current disposable brand. That's my advice on length. If you're buying an overnight pad, get one that's commensurate with whatever disposable pad you wear overnight. And again, if you have found that your disposables are inadequate, buy a cloth overnight that's longer than the disposable you've been wearing. So that's how you deal with length. As to how many you should get, I'm gonna advise that you don't get any more than 10 on your first cycle. And the reason for that is because if you buy more than 10, you know, you'll be better equipped to buy bulk on the second or third cycle with cloth because then you'll know what you like and what you don't. You'll know which ones of the pads that you've purchased are the ones that you reach for, the ones that you go, yay, that one's clean, it's time to use that one again, I love that one. Y you will have those. So that's when you'll know better, you know, what to look for and what to purchase. And, you know, the things that you don't like as much about some of the other ones, you'll know to avoid that. So I would say don't buy any more than 10 uh, for your first cycle. Um, you're going to need at least six uh, to make it through a day, I, I would assume. Uh, if you're using nothing but pads, if you're using internal protection as well, you know, you might get buy with fewer than that, but I would say six to 10 is a, is a good amount to purchase for your first cycle. So let me see, I'm going to pause the video and see if there's anything else that I can think of that really needs to be added. But I think that's a good summary there. Basically in conclusion, I think, I think that's pretty much it. I think that's pretty much all I, I really felt 
needed to be covered for, for this particular video to help you purchase um, your first cloth pads. Now obviously before you go into your first uh, cycle with cloth, you're going to need to consider how you're going to clean them, how you're going to care for them, how you, where you're going to put them, uh, that sort of thing. And I will shortly make a video about how to clean them. And there are some videos online already on YouTube from several people who are cloth users um, describing and demonstrating how they wash their pads. And those are all very useful. I've I've used them and that some of them helped me change what I do. Um, the one thing that I find a little inadequate about most of those is that they demonstrate with one one pad and in reality if you do things any anywhere near the way I do I wash all of mine at the end of my cycle and so I will wash a sink full of them at once and to me it changes a little bit so I'm considering how I might approach the subject of how to clean your pads um, for a video of my own but um, you know, watch what's out there. Some of them are very good. Um, and, you know, consider what are you going to use to clean them? Where are you going to clean them? Are, you know, um, consider that before you go into it. Um, and where you're going to store them and the like. And I guess I can probably talk about some of that stuff in another video too. Anyway, um, Thanks so much for watching, and um, I hope that this was was helpful. It was I tried to include the things that I wish people had talked to me about um, before I started uh, my first cycle with cloth, and um, so I hope I hope that cleared some things up and, and made you a little bit more confident uh, going into to buying some of these. Um, so I will see you again soon, and if there are questions I didn't answer. Um, if there's anything that you want me to cover in more detail or, or what have you, uh, leave a comment below. Um, if you enjoyed the video, like it, please. And just let me know what you're thinking. Thanks very much for watching, and I'm sure I will see you again soon. Bye.